Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to have a look at the equilibrium law. It's just going to be a basic introduction just to get us started and then we'll, um, in following tutorials, we'll have a look at how we can predict the extent of, of a reaction and stuff like that based on the equilibrium law. So let's have a look at this equilibrium here. It's, it's just a generic one. These are This is not carbon, this is just A, B, C and D out of the alphabet of course. Um, so if we wanted to measure how far, if we take these reactants, say, use these reactants here, we added these two together, and we knew it was in an equilibrium, we knew it was going backwards and forwards, okay, so it's, it doesn't always go to completion. Um, as some, as some of this is, um, is made, it's because it's a reversible process, you might have heard of that before, a reversible process. So some of this um, can go back to the reactants and so on, so these are the reactants. Let's call that the reactants for now, because that's what we started with. And these are the products, okay? It does mean if we started with these, we could potentially make these as well, okay? Because it's in equilibrium. And then they'd be the reactants and they'd be the products. But in our example, obviously, these are these are the reactants here. So Kc is, is quite simply defined by this equation here. I'll just drag it up. So Kc is the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So if I just write Kc up here, Kc, and that will define the extent to which side of, I said this is the left hand side, and this is the right hand side. It will define which side it will, whether it's on the left hand side or the right hand side, and this value should tell us uh, which side it should lie on, just by having this number. And these numbers are calculated and documented for a whole heap of reactions but there's nothing stopping people from actually uh, creating new ones for new reactions okay so I'll, I'll explain um, basically where this comes from in, in a second but let's let's just think about um, this process if we've got Kc with a value of 1 say what does that mean? well if we look at this equation here we can see that um, these are the reactants on the bottom, and these are the products on the top. And notice, I just circled these values here, these A, B, C and Ds. These are actually the stoichiometric amounts of reactants and products we should expect. So the concentration of, of the reagents used throughout this whole process have been raised to the power of the whatever the value it was, sto uh, the stoichiometric value that was used in the reaction itself. And that's what gives us this constant. This equation will give us a constant at a constant temperature. So with that in mind, I'll just undo these. With that in mind, let's have a look at uh, this value of Kc equals 1. What does that mean? Well, that basically means that the, there is an equal number of reactants uh, to products. So it's more or less stuck in the middle, halfway, there's an equal number. Let's have a look at a large number. What about a Kc equals 1000? Well a Kc of 1000 means this value on the top must be larger than this value on the bottom because we're dividing by this value on the bottom. So let's, let's put that in perspective. If that was 2 on the top and that was 1, these two were slightly in excess, then you'd have a value of 2 and so on. This is actually saying that there's a thousand times more of these than there are of these, effectively, if we if we did the, uh, the maths. So what does that mean? That means the, the reaction itself for a Kc equals a thousand is being driven over here to the right hand side. There's more products than there are reactants. But because it's a reversible process, um, some of the products will go back to the reactants and so on. So you'd have to probably remove this in order to drive it over. Remember Le, Le Chatelier's principle, if you take some of the material out, you'll still keep producing and stuff like that. So let's have a look at another value. Let's have a look at a value that's actually quite small. So this value that's actually small means, means that um, the value at the bottom is actually quite large now. And so if I choose a different pen, let's... let's Actually, let's just um, let's just colour this, and we can relate to the arrows at the top. 
So that's for KC equals a thousand, direction goes this way. And let's do this in a different color, let's do light blue, say. So KC equals 0 0.001. That means the reaction is being driven this way here. Okay, so it's more over to the right. So there's not much reaction going on. So that's a that's a basic introduction with the equilibrium law. I just want to go over a few more properties of KC. And I'll write these up to the side if, if, if it's not clear. So I've explained that KC of, of 1 indicates that the equilibrium is like halfway between reactants and products. Um, a, a larger value of KC indicates that the the equilibrium is actually favouring more of the product side, the right hand side of this equation. And a lower value of Kc here is favouring really the reactant, so there's not much reaction um, taking place. Now, basically, this, this actually, this value itself, if you look at these figures, actually tells you really um, how far a reaction proceeds, okay? How, how far it goes to give you products. Uh, so the lower values mean it's not really moving along very quickly. The larger value means it's going, uh, it's going to get there um, pretty quickly. But actually, I should comment actually when I say very quickly, I don't mean very quickly at all, uh, because it doesn't actually indicate how fast um, the reaction will go. That's that's more to do with kinetics. The Kc is a is is a value that's expressed for the equilibrium once the equilibrium is reached. Okay, not how fast it gets to equilibrium. That's very different indeed. So Kc is um, really affected by temperature. and So temperature can really af affect. So temperature can really affect um, this, this value and how far it proceeds and things like that. Um, so if we just have a look at, for example, um, if the if the reaction actually gives gives off energy, so it gives it gives it's exothermic. Say, if the, if this reaction is exothermic, so for exothermic reactions, so this is just this is just looking at the temperature of the reaction, how it's affected by um, how the how the Kc is affected by temperature and so on. So if, if the reaction is exothermic. If you increase the temperature of the reaction, Kc will actually decrease. Okay. If you've got an endothermic reaction, it means that the energy needs to be put into the system in order for it to go forward. Then if, um, if you increase the temperature of the reaction, so you increase the temperature here, you're actually giving it the energy it needs because it's endothermic. You're giving it the energy it needs in order to drive it further over to the products. So Kc will increase for endothermic processes. So let's just reiterate that because it can be a little bit confusing. I'll just, I'll just move these out of the way actually. So for an exothermic process and we increase the temperature of the reaction that's not really going to affect it too much. In fact it will slow it down because if that's exothermic that needs energy uh, gives off energy to get here then this will require energy to get here so it actually make it further over there so Kc will decrease um, as you increase the temperature okay so Kc will increase so for exothermic processes let's just give me a brush for exothermic processes Kc Will for an exothermic process, Kc will go down as T goes up. Okay, because it's already giving off heat anyway. So if you increase the temperature, all you're doing is driving it backwards because this one requires heat to get down there. So for an endothermic process, and I'll just. I'll just colour these as well. So let's colour this in. I'll colour that in red. So for an endothermic process now, as Kc, what will happen to Kc for an endothermic process? Well, if if this requires heat or energy 
in order to move forward. Then as the temperature goes up, if you increase the temperature, you're basically giving it that energy. So Kc will go up as the temperature goes up. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a good way of finding out whether a, a process is exothermic or endothermic. Obviously you can detect that for an exothermic process you'll be able to detect the temperature increase. And an endothermic process you'll be able to detect the temperature decrease anyway. But this is just this is just basically um, saying what happens with KC. If you've got any questions just ask me anyway. So that's it for now. Bye bye.